Assalamu <coughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Instagram fam, friends and followers of As-Safi Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak wa nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jama'in Welcome to another segment of Revert Reflections And yesterday uh, we began a discussion of the concept of intention and its significance in Islam and the effect that Aniya has on our deeds in general and specifically the deed of Islam or the deed of being Muslim and I want to thank you all for getting up with me and joining me and uh, watching this live uh, or catching up with me later and watching it uh, later uh, and following this series which I believe is a very important series for all Muslims but particularly for revert uh, our convert Muslims so what does this niyyah, what is the concept of a niyyah, and what is the significance as it relates to our deeds in general? And what, and what is the significance and importance of a niyyah as it relates to being Muslim, to the most important deed, the foundational deed that we all do, or we're all trying to do, and that is being Muslim. So today, yesterday we mentioned the hadith of the Lahi ibn Umar. Very important hadith as it relate to, relates to a niyyah or the concept of intention. And today we want to kind of uh, dissect briefly and really um, understand or take a closer look at the hadith which will set the table for the discussions we want to have about a niyyah uh, in the coming days or, or to close out the week. So in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَلُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Actions are but by intentions, which basically means that every deed that we do, we do for a reason. We do it because we want that deed to serve a purpose or to communicate a message. And we do the deed for someone or for something, likely to please or to appease someone or something. Then he says, And every person will receive as a recompense for his deeds, or the recompense that he receives for his deeds will be in accordance with what he intended. So the reward that we get, good or bad, from Allah, the recompense we get from Allah, good or bad, will depend upon our intention, our motive, the why. Why are we doing this deed? That is a primary factor in determining what reward or recompense we get from Allah for that deed. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he gives an example. He says, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ He says, so he who his migration is to Allah, and to his messenger. Now the word migration here is mentioned ala sabili mithal lal hasar. It's mentioned to provide an example, not to restrict the meaning of the hadith to this particular deed migrating for the sake of Allah. So you could actually take the word hijrah and replace it with the word amaluhu, right? From man kanat amaluhu or from man kana amaluhu, whoever his deed you could even replace it with the word whoever his Islam, his deed of being a Muslim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet ﷺ is telling us here that if our deed fulfills two conditions, it's for Allah's sake and it's done in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah ﷺ. Whoever his deed is to Allah and to his messenger, it's done for Allah and done in accordance with the sunnah of Allah's messenger. Then the reward he will get will be in accordance with that. For him there is a reward from Allah because his deed has fulfilled two conditions which are the most basic and fundamental conditions for acceptance of deeds. Two boxes that you and I should always make sure that we're checking in every deed that we do, a salat, a dua, uh, a dhikr, giving charity to people, and most importantly, being Muslim. Two boxes we need to make sure we're checking in those deeds. Number one, we're doing it for Allah's sake. 
We're not doing it for the sake of the people. We're not doing it so the people will honor us or respect us or raise us in ranks, raise our status. No, we're doing it for Allah's sake, for his pleasure, so that he will do those things for us, raise our status and raise our rank and give us Jannah. The second box, that we do it in accordance with the Sunnah of Rasulullah, that we practice Islam the way the Prophet practiced Islam. If we do that, Allah is going to accept it. Then the Prophet goes on and says, but there's another side of the story when it comes to a niyyah. The side that none of us wants to be on. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِهُهَا He said, but he who his deed that is done or performed because of some commodity he hopes to obtain as a consequence. He's trying to get, he's doing a good deed, a religious deed, but he's doing it to get what? He's doing it to get some money. He's doing it to get some material thing. Or he's doing it because there is a romantic relationship that he wants to have, he wants to be in, and he can only be in it if he's Muslim. Or there's a romantic relationship that he feels or she feels will be enhanced or improved. We'll draw closer to each other if I'm Muslim. As an example, this is what the Prophet is saying. If a person did their deed with other than Allah in mind, if they did their deed with other than Allah in mind, فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِمَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ then that deed, the reward for it, will be whatever they intended. They wanted to get some worldly thing out of it, that's what they'll get. They wanted to enhance, improve, or get into a romantic relationship, that's what they'll get. But they'll get nothing from Allah. And this example that the Prophet gave of a commodity, or a woman, a romantic relationship, these are just examples, just like in the first case. This is not the only thing that will keep you from getting your deeds accepted, but this is an example of something which will keep you from getting your deeds accepted. Having your intention be for other than Allah. Having your intention be to please, to achieve. Having your motive, having your why be other than seeking Allah's pleasure and His paradise. Now, this is just a synopsis, a review of the meaning of the hadith so that we can build upon that in the coming days trying to have a better understanding of the concept and significance of intention as it relates to our deeds generally and as it relates to us being Muslims. How important it is for us to make sure that the reason why we're Muslim, the reason why we're practicing Islam is the right reason. Because everything else is built upon that foundation, that assess, and if the assess is facet, as we're going to see, if the sass is corrupt, then the building will be what? It will be unstable and it will be also corrupt. And we're going to talk more about this in the coming days, but we wanted to set the table. And for some of you may say, well, this is a review. We know this hadith is a famous hadith. This hadith is talked about all the time. But what I want to say to you, and this is important for my convert brothers and sisters who have learned some things, is that sometimes for us to take two steps forward, we have to take one step back. And so sometimes we have to review knowledge and really ask ourselves, are we living in accordance with that knowledge? Have we truly understood that knowledge correctly so we can practice it correctly? And so don't be uh, turned off by the fact that this segment was kind of a review. Sometimes you have to take one step back to take two steps forward. Look forward to talking to you and seeing you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, for another segment. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakum Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.